Hi, I'm Andrea Pereira and I just finished my PhD in the lab of Dr. Vanessa Moraes here at IMM. In order for us to walk, talk, dance, think and basically live, we need energy, which is usually stored in the form of ATP molecules. Our cells have different mechanisms to produce ATP, and one of the most efficient ones is through oxidative phosphorylation, a process that occurs in organelles called mitochondria. Within our body, our organs don't have the same energetic requirements. Some organs require more energy to work than others, and one of such organs is the brain. More specifically, synaptic transmission, the process where neurons transmit electrochemical signals between themselves and to target cells, is one of the most energy demanding processes in the brain. And so, the first part of my PhD project aimed to understand if mitochondria that are present specifically at synapses, called synaptic mitochondria, have a distinct bioenergetic fingerprint that enables them to meet the necessary energetic requirements in that site, in comparison with other brain mitochondria called the non-synaptic mitochondria. From the isolation of these brain mitochondrial populations and through biochemical assays, we uncover that in synaptic mitochondria, the complex responsible for ATP production had an increased activity, capacity, and was arranged in a supermolecular organization that has been associated with a more efficient production of ATP. On the other hand, we also found that the isolated activity of another oxidative phosphorylation complex, complex 1, was lower in synaptic mitochondria, but when assessed in association with other complexes, was actually higher. This differential organization of complex 1 has been associated with a higher energetic output with less harmful side effects to the mitochondria. Overall, the results that we obtain seem to indicate that under resting conditions, synaptic mitochondria have already an energetic machinery on hold to help responding to the higher energetic demands of synaptic transmission. In the second part of my PhD, I focus on studying the impact of a recently formulated medium on mouse primary neuron cultures, which are widely used as in vitro models to study synaptic and neurobiology. The interesting particularity of this medium is that it was formulated to mimic the brain environment. And so we wanted to understand if there were maturation and bioenergetic differences on most primary neuronal cultures using this medium in comparison with primary neuronal cultures uh, maintained in a commonly used neuronal medium. We found that cultures in the new medium abundantly stained for neuronal and synaptic markers and presented more synapses. And bioenergetically, the neurons in the new medium presented increased ATP levels and higher mitochondrial respiration, characteristic of neuronal maturation and differentiation. As a lot of studies use in vitro neuronal cultures, the use of more physiologically re related uh, neuronal media that support mitochondrial activity and synaptic maturation could help mimicking molecular and biochemical defects that arise from neurogenerative and neurological disorders. Thank you.